and welcome to the Tiny Human Knits podcast, my podcast about knitting, sewing, cross-stitch, crochet, and all manner of crafty goodness. I'm coming to you from High Level, Alberta, Canada, where I live with my husband, our pet rabbit, Oscar, and our new kitten, Shrimply Pibbles, who you may be able to hear crying in the background. Uh, she doesn't like being uh, left to her own devices. She's a very, very social kitten, um, and she's locked up right now because she's been digging up our plants in the house, so she's not allowed in the house without parental supervision. Um, I want to start out by saying thank you so much for watching this podcast and for subscribing um, both on Instagram and on uh, YouTube. And as a way to say thank you for everyone who's done so, I want to start this podcast by announcing a giveaway. Um, I'm going to be hosting this giveaway in my Ravelry page. Um, it's Tiny Human Knits under the groups tab. And, uh, so if you join the group there, you can also add me as a friend on Ravelry. I really like when people do that. Um, go to the groups and I will have a thread open there and I'll have a prompt um, for that listed uh, when this podcast goes up. And what I will be giving away is this skein of opal sock yarn and the colorway... Eh only a number. Anyway, you'll get this. You'll get a 40 inch set of 2.25 millimeter Addy Turbo Sock Rockets and one of my project bags. So this will be all together as one giveaway prize. Um, so yeah, I'll put the prompt up right away and you'll be able to enter for that. And I don't know how long I'll be running it for. I think I'll just leave it up to whenever I feel like probably for a few weeks. Um, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, I really want to send that off to someone because sock it. Especially someone who doesn't make socks normally. That'd be nice. So that's why I wanted to, what I wanted to start with the podcast with. Um, other places you can find me on the social media platforms is on Instagram as Tiny Human Knits and find my Etsy store as Tiny Human Knits as well. Um, pretty much if you can't find someone by the name of Tiny Human Knits, I'm probably not on there. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to start off by saying huge thank you. I super appreciate it and it's a lot of fun getting feedback from people on all the multiple platforms. So I've been really enjoying it and I hope it continues. Um, I'm not wearing any knitted garments today because it's very hot in this room. Um, it hasn't been too bad weather-wise. We've got a lot of rain. Um, the other day we got down to 14 degrees Celsius, like midday, so it was quite cool. Um, but this room that I podcast in isn't very well circulated because the, um, it has all my yarn in it, so I keep the door closed at all times so the lovely little pets that we have don't get in and eat any labels or the cat likes to sleep on the yarn so just keep her out of here for as much as I can um, so I'm not wearing anything but I do have four finished objects um, one of them I do not have on hand as it is it was finished it was made for a co-worker of mine so I gave it to her as soon as I had finished it and that's actually the Diodara pullover um, that's by Maria Olson I'll post um, put in a picture of it uh, if I can um, but that one I finished the day after I podcast last, and I washed it, blocked it, sewed it all the ends, and I figured I'd just give it to her. Um, and if anyone's wondering, I made it out of the Knit Pick Swish DK, and after I washed it, it felt like silk. It was beautiful. I'm kind of worried it might actually stretch out too much, but that's fine. The, the, the way that the sweater is constructed, it won't be too bad, but it was so soft. So if anyone's wondering how that washes up, a++. Plus plus. It's beautiful. Um, but the one project I said last time I wouldn't have on hand, I actually do. And that's my Stranger cardigan. It's made for the same co-worker. Uh, she ordered a couple things when we first started working together. Um, I didn't receive the extra yarn that I needed for this cardigan until Monday, this past Monday. Um, so I didn't get a chance to finish it before then, I just needed to do the sleeves, sew it all together and block it and sew in the ends. Um, but I got it on Monday, so I've been working on that since, and I have finished it. It's still a bit damp, just because I did just wash it yesterday. Let's see if I can get this 
properly oriented. Okay, so it looks kind of big. Oh, this isn't going to work. So the way this is made is you can wear it as a regular cardigan with this cable detail. Oh, goodness, this thing. Or you can flip it upside down and wear it as a shawl collar. I'll show you what I mean. This thing is really heavy. So you can wear it just regular with the cable against the neck. I love this pattern. Um, or you can turn it upside down and wear it like this. Which this way is super cozy because it's right up against your neck and it's nice and thick. And it's more of a wrap style cardigan. Ah. It's gorgeous. I think she's gonna like it a lot. So yeah, I uh, it's almost dry. Um, it actually dried rather quickly. And I made this out of Premier Yarns, um, the Debbie Norville um, selection. It's inexpensive yarn. You can buy it at Michael's. It is 100% acrylic, but uh, my coworker is really sensitive to wool and we have to work a bit on a budget because uh, buying fancy yarn all the time is a bit, uh, yeah, it's up over a while. So it's nice and soft. It's the anti-pilling, so it won't get that fuzzy halo that a lot of acrylics do. So yeah. And that is a Brooklyn Tweed pattern. That's pretty usual. Um, so yeah, now that I'm done that, I can work on, I can start working on my next knitting projects, which is very exciting. Um, the other two finished objects I have are socks. Um, one of my other coworkers decided that um, there's a group of six of us uh, ladies who work at the office that uh, spend the most time together, and she decided that we all needed to have matching socks to remember the summer season that we've been working together. So she also picked the colors, which are gray and pink. Um, and the yarns I picked for that is Knit Picks Stroll Fingering in the Dove Heather. And then for the pink, um, and for this, I'm using this as heel toe cuff because it has nylon in it, so it's a little bit stronger, so it'll last longer. Because the other color I picked was the Blossom Heather in the palette, Knit Picks palette. And this is purely a Peruvian Highland wool. Like, it doesn't have any nylon in it, it doesn't have any tensile or anything. So I wanted this to be in the place where you get the most wear, and so it should be alright with this one. Um, someone did comment about that on Instagram, but I'm pretty sure the people I'm making these socks for, they'll wear them a couple times and then forget about them. Um, so I'm not really worried. But those are the two yarns that I'm using. And I made the pair for myself first, um, just to see how the yarn knit up, what the quality was like, just to see if I need, wanted to actually make the pairs like that. So mine is not going to have a contrast heel because I wasn't sure what kind of heel I wanted to do yet. So mine, I do have the pink as the heel, and for me, that's fine because I'll be the one, if they break, I can fix them. Um, I'm perfectly capable of doing that myself, so I don't have to like bring them to anyone to fix. So that's mine. And then I decided that I was going to try and do the Fish Lips Kiss heel for everybody else. Um, and I, I'm going to tell you now, I'm in love. The heel knits up so quickly and it fits so well. I did not think it was going to fit that well considering I've been doing a gusset for so long. But um, the first one I did was for our receptionist and we have almost the same size feet. So I was able to feel just uh, how nice the Fish Lips Kiss heel is. And that, this is going to look exactly the same <laughs> except with a different heel. So that's what that's like. And I haven't washed these yet, and I'm pretty sure that the um, the palette yarn is going to bloom quite a bit when I wash them, so it'll actually fill in a bit of the gaps here. But 
All of the other socks I'm going to be making are going to look exactly the same. The only difference is going to be the stitch count. I just need to sew in some ends too. Um, but yeah. Next time I hope I have all of these done. Um, so I've got two finished pairs and then I also have a hoe for one of my other co-workers. Again, it's going to look exactly the same. Um, I'm, I've already started on the second sock for this one. And I've decided that as a treat to myself for making so many of the exact same pair of socks, I mean, I'm never going to complain about second sock syndrome again because making 12 identical socks is kind of dull. Um, but I have decided that I'm going to treat myself to a pair of socks, to knitting a pair of socks. And these aren't even going to be for me. These were requested as a gift for a friend of one of my coworkers. Um, but I'm going to use this Cauldron of Colors, and that is in their, let's see, and that's in the Caribbean Nemesis colorway, and I absolutely adore it. You can see these bluish grays and pink speckles, and I love it. Um, so I'm going to be using this. I'm not sure if I'm going to have a contrast heel yet. I don't know what kind of heel I want to do because this is a person I don't have an outline of their foot. I'm not entirely sure what foot size they are. Um, I have a rough estimate from the person who requested it, um, but we'll see. We'll see. But if I do, I was thinking of using this uh, leftover. I don't have the tag, so I'm not entirely sure who this is by. Um, but I made a pair of mittens last year colorwork mittens that I use this in. So I thought they looked nice together. It's not an exact match, but it has the same sort of tone. Um, so yeah, this will break up the monotony of pink and gray socks a little bit, I hope. Um, but yeah, there's that. So the third pair of pink and gray socks was my first work in progress. Um, my Second work in progress that I have going on is sort of a casual in between when I get really sick of making socks, something with a little bit of pattern in it, um, and that's the Pimlico hat, <clears throat> pardon me, and that is by Therese Headland, and I'm making this out of leftover Swish DK that I had from the Diodara pullover. I've only got the rib done, I've only just started working on the pattern. It's a one by one twisted rib, and it moves into a mostly garter and then with some twisted uh, stitches in there which I really love. I've actually made this hat pattern before and that is this one here and this I made out of Patton's Classic DK. Um, the yellow was a color that I actually picked out but this tealy green is actually hand dyed and I love it. And I finished knitting this last year after we moved away from Edmonton the first time um, last summer. And I love making hats. They're a great way to just sort of cleanse your palette. It's a quick project most of the time. Um, and it's just a good way to sort of clean the slate and ready for your next project. So that's what I'm kind of hoping this turns out to be. Um, another project that I'm going to be starting right away though um, so it's future whip, I guess, is going to be a cardigan and I'm going to be making it out of Knit Pick City Tweed DK. And this I believe is the Bad Blood, oh, Blue Blood, Blue Blood colorway. It's a beautiful red tweed. It's a deep, deep red, like it's not a bright, shiny red. It's almost burgundy, almost. Um, and this is going to be the Gwyneth cardigan by Amanda Jones. And this was in a magazine, uh, the Knitter magazine. Uh, this is issue 95. And I just printed it out because I don't have the magazine. Um, it's out of print now, so I had to download it. Um, and it's got, let's see, there's a better picture. Hard to I know it's in black and white, so I apologize. Um, it's just a really nice, casual cardigan and it's got both cables and lace which I'm really excited about because um, I feel like that'll make it go by really quickly. Um, so this is for a co-worker. 
again. Uh, one day I'll start knitting for myself again. I'm really hoping to in uh, in September to start doing Christmas slash selfish knitting. Um, so I'll be starting that right away. I'm planning on swatching for it today, uh, just so I can get on the needles cause socks. I like to do, I like to keep for at work knitting cause it's really slow. So I'll read a book online and knit socks as I wait for work to come in. So this will be a good thing to keep at home where it needs a little bit more uh, attention to detail, which is kind of the way I like to do it anyway. Um, so those are all the projects that I'm working on at the moment. Um, I can now move into acquisitions, uh, which I apologize for people who don't particularly care for acquisitions, um, but there's a couple that I really, really want to talk about. Um, first one that I want to talk about is my friend Rosie of the Pixel Atlantis podcast sent me a package. I might have said before, we're kind of um, parcel buddies. We've been exchanging uh, packages to and fro for almost a year now. Um, she sent me an absolutely fantastic package. And, oh goodness gracious. First of all, she sent me these adorable mini skeins. And this more than anything makes me want to start a cozy memories blanket. Um, I've been thinking about it. I might start and then I was thinking, cause I've got a bunch of pillows on my bed that don't have any cases on them. Um, they're purely decorative, but they don't have any cases. And I was thinking instead of committing to a whole blanket of cozy memory squares, I might just do cushion covers for them. So, and I think I have enough uh, mini skeins for that and whole skeins that will have leftovers for that. So I might do that. So I might have a cushion that has that on there. Um, and she also sent me this skein of Ginger Twist Studio. And this is the Ginger's Hand Dyed Sheepish, Sheepish Sock in the Lally Roach colorway. Uh, it's Blue Face Lester and Nylon. And actually, uh, when I got this package, I opened it up in my kitchen, and as soon as my husband saw this one, he says, yes, that one. So, I think he's going to get a pair of socks out of this. But the best part is she included a hand-dyed skein of yarn, and it is called uh, Zelda. It's the Zelda colorway. And I think it's super cute. And it's superwash merino and nylon, but it feels ridiculously soft. Like I'm gonna make myself socks out of this, and I feel like I might fall on my ass a lot in the house because there, it feels like it'd be slick. But I'm so excited! I love these speckles, and it's gonna—I think it's gonna turn out brilliantly self-striping. Um, so I'm really excited about that. I hope to cast these on soon. They might be my first pair of selfish knit socks after I finish the ridiculous queue of socks that I have for other people. So there's that one. Um, I also put in an order with Min Knit Cravings. Um, it's a yarn dyeing company out of Saskatchewan, um, which I put in the order last week. They mailed it out on Monday and I got it on Wednesday. So that's the world's fastest shipping. Um, I got myself a couple of skeins. Um, I got myself a mini skein set, which is adorable. This is their Girl Next Door mini skein set. And they're very summery, very bright, and have already been claimed by many people that I work with. Um, mittens out of these I think is what's gonna happen but I also ordered this sock set which is called mint chip with a waffle cone mini skein and these will be socks for me and then just as some um, sort of stash enhancement for basic colors I ordered a dandelion and a vanilla and I feel like these are just going to be good for contrast heel, toes, and cuffs, or 
as a shawl um, color, I'm thinking with all the yarn that I've been ordering lately, I might be able to do a find your fade, which I would absolutely adore to do. Um, so I feel like this one might be in there, or both. Um, I love this color, so. So that was that order. My yarn skins are piling up here. I also uh, picked up another skein from Woolberry Fiber Co. Um, this is their Coco Cream and their Simple Sock Base. And I picked this up because I believe it was on the clearance section. Um, and it's such a good neutral base color that I feel like that will also go into a Find Your Fade, which, you know, maybe. Actually, yeah. This actually might be a thing. Um, I'm sorry if this is long-winded. I need to stop. I ordered a skein from Fine Fish Yarns, pardon Franklin. Um, this, it's pretty much, this is me ordering at least one thing from every place that I wanted to, just for the winter, so I have lots of beautiful stuff in my stash that I can knit up without having to buy a bunch. Um, but I ordered this from Fine Fish Yarns, and it's Blue Skies and Blooms in their core sock. And it says, I don't normally do blues, but this is beautiful. And my favorite part is these dark brown speckles. You know, maybe. One of the most exciting ones that I got, though, and this I've been pining after for a long time, is I ordered from Amy of the Stranded Dye Works Company and the Stranded Dye Works Podcast. Um, Flamingo legs. This is something that I wanted since I started watching Amy's podcast. This is the one, besides Industrial Kingfisher, this is my favorite. Um, she didn't have any full skeins, but I saw that she had sock blanks, and I've never used a sock blank before. So, this is my first sock blank, and it's so awesome. This one I'm really excited for. This is mine. No one, no one can claim this. This is mine. And last, but certainly not least, um, I'm actually going to gush about this company more than any other company I think I've ever done before. Um, I ordered from them. I found them on Ravelry. Uh, they were in the D-Stash listing, um, which, by the way, if anyone wants to advertise, that is a great place to advertise. Um, I've seen so many yarns that I've never heard of before on Instagram or on YouTube or anything through Ravelry. And I found this one, and I saw the one color, and I had to have it. It's stunning. The company I'm talking about is called Yarning Apart. Um, they're a fairly new uh, dyer. You can find them as Yarning Apart on uh, Etsy as well. I'll link it down below. And they're fairly new. And I ordered this colorway. It's called Phoenix. It's in their um, Yarning Basic Space. 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. And... It's so beautiful. These colors are so deep and variegated and just gorgeous. They speak to me on an emotional level. This is their card. And I ordered this one first. And it got here super quick. The colors are super amazing. And, um... The feel of the yarn is better than any other base I've ever felt. For me personally, I know a lot of people like a high twist. Um, but this has got just the right twist, just the right plumpness, and the colors are stunning. Um, I ended up ordering uh, once more in this podcast. They were having, um, they had sort of like, because um, they're new, they have a lot of, I think, when things don't turn out quite right, um, they sell them at a little bit of a discount. And I ordered this one, which is called um, Spilled Ink. It's a one of a kind. And it's got grays and it's got sort of a beigey undertone and brown speckles. And I love them. I love them so much. Um, I have ordered some more because um, I think this is... This is my favorite yarn ever, and I'm so excited to use it. And these go so well together, 
because you can tell that the undertones are very similar. Um, so I have ordered some more and I'm kind of hoping that I have enough to do a so faded sweater in this brand. Even if it's just three colors together, I'll be happy. It's so beautiful. I can't recommend them enough. I really can't. Fast shipping, amazing quality, colors are top notch. So yeah, my ridiculous acquisitions, not including those ones. Another thing that I had picked up um, was a Knit Picks order and I added some, um, some undyed yarn because I really wanted to try. I love hand dyeing yarn, even if it's just with food coloring and like Kool-Aid packets. It's fun, you get your own colorway and you can try to experiment with colors, which is harder than it seems. Um, so my husband and I uh, dyed up some of our own yarn and uh, his, I'm not gonna lie, his turned out better than mine, I think. Um, I'd like to take some credit though because I'm the one who actually makes the colors. But uh, I'll show you mine first. Um, I went for a mint green with speckles and my husband called this um, mostly shell watermelon. That was his name for it. <laughs> so that was mine and he dyed this blue variegated with red and green speckles and I actually find this rather Christmassy so I'm hoping to make him a pair of Christmas socks out of this. He was very proud of himself. Very, very proud of himself. Because he's a ridiculous man. So yeah, we dyed those together. I have ordered more um, undyed, purely for fun. Uh, I'm gonna invite my cousin over and we're gonna dye some yarn, and my husband has a very particular idea in mind of something he wants to try. So, and for that, I'm gonna have to knit up his socks uh, before he dyes it. So it might be a while before we actually get around to doing it. But it's lots of fun, and I kind of recommend that everybody tries it just at least once, because then you can get your own unique uh, skein of yarn that you've dyed yourself. Um, the other thing I ordered from Knit Picks is a Knit Swift and Ball Winder, because I am so sick of having to hand wind balls into these like hard little balls. Um, so I'm really excited for that, because I am winding yarn from a skein by yourself is very difficult. You just have to put it over your feet and then you have to like slowly unravel it while you wind it up. So I, I gave in. Uh, Knit Picks was having an extra sale on top of the sale where if you spent a certain, certain amount of money, you get a certain amount of money off. So I figured this is something I've been ordering so many looped skeins of yarn that I, I can't wind them by hand anymore. I'm so sick of it. But I'm very excited for that to come in because I love the the look of cakes. Um, so to be able to make my own is very exciting. Um, so that is my ridiculous acquisitions. I do have more coming, but it's more um, like drops yarn and um, like regia, just base yarn that is good for making sweaters uh, and. Um, I've ordered some more knit picks as well um, that I already have. It's for my husband's sweater. He was pining for one. So that should be coming soon, but nothing over the top, like hand dyed wise, except for yarning apart, because I did order quite a few. I kind of want to build my stash up with theirs specifically. But another thing I wanted to talk about is a potential knit along. Um, I have wanted to knit. Um, I have wanted to host a knit along for a long time, even before I started this podcast, because I love the the way it inspires people to maybe do something they wouldn't have done before, or start a different type of project. Like, um, there's so many sock knit alongs that people, you know, they pump out a lot of socks for themselves, for others. Um, so I thought that'd be a fun thing to do. And I wanted to do a sweater knit along. Um, I'm going to call it the sweater weather knit along. Um, and I think I'm going to start it August 1st. And it'll probably go until the end of December. Just because I know not everyone has as much time as I do. And if you're just starting out, it might take you a little bit longer. Um, so it'll be, uh, whips will be welcome uh, as long as they're no more than 50% completed. 
Uh, it has, it will have to be um, older child to adult size though, because um, I'm not going to help baby sweaters because they're super easy and quick and it's not quite the same level of difficulty. And uh, so whips will be welcome. Um, doesn't matter how difficult it is. What I personally am going to be doing is I want to go through three sweater patterns that are previously chosen. Uh, one that's easy, one that's intermediate, and one that's difficult. Just to sort of show, like, it is possible to make any sweater for yourself. Um, I already have the patterns picked out. So, for the easy sweater for myself, and this will all be for myself for once, um, I have picked the Roaming Around, Roaming Around? This one. And it's in black and white so you can't see the color difference, but it's made with three colors in the sport weight. And that I have chosen my Quinson Co. Chickadee. And these three colors. I ordered more of this color here because it's going to be the main color. So I have enough for it. Um, and those are the colors I'm going to use. I'm very excited about this. I've wanted to make this yarn into a sweater for a long time. So I've got that chosen for my first one. Um, it was between this and the uh, Moss Bank uh, Brooklyn Tweed pattern. Uh, but I figured the Moss Bank might actually be too easy. Although it would make good potato chip knitting. We'll see. I think it'll be this though. Maybe I'll have enough time to do both. I don't know. But that's that first one. Um, the second one as an intermediate pattern that I wanted to do is in this book, Perfectly Feminine Knits. Um, and I have to say, this is probably my favorite knitting pattern book I've ever purchased. Um, there's so many patterns in here that I would love to make from varying dif different uh, difficulties. But the one that I'm going to do, and I have made this one before, but it wasn't for myself. Um, let's see. Goodness gracious. And that is this one. I think it's called, pronounced uh, the Silly. Um, you knit it with two strands held together, uh, lace weight or fingering weight, depending on your gauge. And I have chosen... The Cascade 220 Fingering, and I also have Knit Picks um, Alpaca Cloud. Uh, originally, I had ordered enough of the Knit Picks Alpaca to do all in this type of yarn, but I realized that Pure Alpaca is too soft uh, to hold its structure, so I'm going to hold it together with 100% wool, so it has a little bit more um, hold on itself. And plus, I think this will make it beautifully variegated. A little bit of a different color tone. I'm really excited. I've wanted one of my own for over a year. Actually, I think I made it two years ago the first time. And it's a super intuitive knit. Um, it looks way harder than it actually is. All you need to do really is know how to knit in the round and yarn overs. It's pretty much all you need to do to make that. And for the last pattern that I'm going to be doing at the end, I might have time for more, but we'll see, um, it's going to be the Divide Pullover. Um, for this one, I'm not entirely sure if it's a difficult pattern or it's just really in-depth, if you know what I mean, um, where it's more, it's, uh, more patience than skill, but... I want to make it anyway, and I think it's going to take a lot of concentration and time. And I'm really looking forward to it because it's gorgeous. And for that one, I've mentioned before, if it works out gauge-wise, I'm going to be making it out of this wool ghetto. 100% wool in this beautiful pink color. And I should have enough of that. So yeah, that's my planned... Uh, Planned projects. I'm going to make a, a Ravelry group page about the knit along in the Ravelry group page. Um, just to get people maybe talking about what kind of patterns you'd like to pick. Um, I'll have the rules in there as well. And I'll be making some uh, 
prizes. Um, there may be some sweater size project bags in with those. I'll make some especially and then we'll see how, where I can scrounge up some, some prizes, some goodies and some yarn. So yeah, if anyone's interested, please let me know. Um, I think it's really exciting. Sweaters are my favorite thing to knit and they make me so happy. And I want everyone to experience just how, how nice it is to have your own handmade sweaters. Um, cardigans are also welcome, just because I don't have any. Um, goodness, besides that, um, for Blather, my sister's coming over today. She's bringing her twin boys, my adorable little nephews. I'm really excited to have them over. Um, our garden is starting to bear fruit as it were um so i want them to experience what it's like to be in a garden like we had when we grew up and like picking peas off of the vine and getting attacked by grasshoppers is what we've got going on right now um so i'm really looking forward to that which is why i'm i'm podcasting a day early usually i do on saturday morning and this is friday uh just because i don't know how much time i'm going to actually have to to knit and, and podcast just so I did it a day early um but yeah we'll see how that goes and I'm really looking forward to it and besides that just making for other people I did a bit of sewing this week uh, I made some uh, pillow cushions for a co-worker my first time inserting a invisible zipper which is actually way easier than I thought it was going to be and I also fixed some clothes that someone gave to me um, but besides that, I should probably go and clean my house a little bit and maybe do some prep cooking for the visit. If I've forgotten anything, I'll just put it in the show notes. Um, I need to learn how to write better show notes, but eh, you live and you learn. But uh, I'm going to head out and I hope everyone's having an amazing summer. Um, it's been great here, not too hot, which is just how I like it. Um, and if you want, follow me on Instagram. As I said, it's Tiny Human Knits on Instagram, uh, Tiny Human Knits on Ravelry, and the groups page, and Tiny Human Knits on Etsy. So check me out on those places. Follow me or like my page or anything you'd like. And I hope everyone's having a wonderful time. And I will see you next time with a lot more FOs. So bye.